viewers, welcome to the Fadu Network. I am Omar Wali. With me here is Sheikh Omar Fai, the country's defense minister. Mr. Fai, welcome once again to Thank the Fadu you. Network. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, um, as you know, Corona is the oh. problem facing the world at the moment. We all know Gambia also has registered a single case. Um, what is your message to the public, just to start with? Um, thank you. Thank you, Omar, for having me. And uh, we thank all our viewers, our listeners uh, of the Fatu Network, a very strong platform. The corona, first of all, we just say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just get it off everybody and get it out of the wall. It's a very serious um, problem, extremely serious. And uh, it is, in fact, almost an, 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 an emergency situation. It is almost disastrous, where you lose lives. Uh, unfortunately, we have registered one. We, we all know it was on social media. It was on government networks that there was a Gambian lady from the UK. Mm -hmm. And that came, who has expressed concern even during the flight that she sat with somebody who eventually, I think she noticed there was something wrong. She came, she was okay, but eventually she drove herself home, went back to the clinic and realized that she has picked it up. But the Gambia, the government of the Gambia, under the leadership of president, has made several pronouncements, putting the Minister of Health as a leader and the mouthpiece of the government when it gets to corona and health-related issues. The lady is responding to treatment at the, at the MRC, and all the necessary precautions have been taken. And uh, we've all had the statement of His Excellency the President. We also were in cabinet for almost 12 hours or more yesterday, and it was all under the visionary leadership of President and cabinet we were making deliberations and taking decisions for the interests of this country as um, part of international community because we are not an island by ourselves. So we have to work with our partners to exercise international best practice and that's what we do. And we pray and hope that that ready will recover. All that our victims will recover. Well, we extend condolences for those that are passed, but the rest of our people to follow the instructions of the government and the Minister of Health and his team, exercise restraint, and be careful, and cut down on social interactions uh, at all levels. And when we do that, we're very optimistic that with the precautions that are in place, God Almighty will help us do it. So, um, we know this thing just started, but uh, in the event that uh, it's out of hands, Okay, you're giving me, thank you so much, yes. because this is something that I do want to think this time. Yeah, yeah. I'll no, no, I brought one for you. Oh, brought one for me. Yeah, so, so sometimes I have to even <laughs> do like this. So this is very practical. Okay. Mm, this is what we do. Yeah. Uh, we've cleaned our hands, and hopefully you've not traveled anywhere, and we are not, you know, so hopefully, you know, hopefully, inshallah, we'll be okay. We just have to pray. Right. Uh, we have to go back to the drawing board. People have abandoned all those good traditions and cultures and prayers. They think that in the civilized world you don't do those things. Uh, we and people that we, we, we don't believe in that, we still believe in prayer, restrain, maintain our culture, and uh, listen to the doctors and the scientists so that they tell us their recommendation. Even the president himself, when he comes, he will just speak. So everybody at cabinet, everybody is adhering to and all the institutions. Parliament also, suspended the proceedings, uh, the Honorable Speaker. So, Omar, this is the situation. We hope that uh, it will just cease here. Government, from the point of entries, have taken and put some mechanisms in place. And as I said, all questions should be directed to the Minister of Health and his team. Anything dealing with corona, with health issues, he's an expert, not only the minister, but he's a doctor. And President said, we're so blessed that at this time, we have somebody who is not only politically a minister, but he's also a technician in his own way because he is a qualified doctor. And lots of Gambian doctors who have retired and are now 
in the Gambia and a household name around the world uh, in a team supporting the Minister of Health and the Gambia. We have seen countries that are severely affected by this corona. Uh, most of them deploy the military. We will come to that. But uh, schools are shut down, including universities, public gatherings, and uh, even the open rooms. Mm -hmm. But the borders are still open. The airport is still open. So this is a concern coming from Gambians. They say they're still worried. Why is it that they, we know that um, President has proposed a, a $500 million here, but and travel bans, or come, people coming from 47 countries will go um, mandatory isolation. But was it an, uh, a mistake from your end, or it was deliberate that the government decided to leave the airport open? A couple of minutes ago, we saw some people scrambling with the, with the security at the airport. They said they must come into the country by force. Okay. As I said, when it comes to mechanisms and some things that are happening, the Minister of Health will be in a better position to explain those details because he's been mandated by the President and that's his area. But as a Gambian and a Minister as well, defense, because this corona thing has national security implications. If you look at the Gambia, we're following international best practice. Omar, let Gambians know that Nyun, here, we have to be careful. We do not have the luxury that other countries have, that we can just get up and close borders and do stuff. Halifa Sala, Honorable, said it in the National Assembly. Be careful, because so everything has to happen in a process. If you shut down today the Gambia, I'm just giving you an example. You know, we don't even make the singlest needle here. I know people make a lot of noise. Gambians, when they talk, you think that they can manufacture atomic bomb because there's too much talk we need. So when you do that and you want something, how will this come? Sugar, rice, basic communities, medical. As the borders were open, so medical supplies were coming in. If we had m the capacity to manufacture them here, you can say, shut your border. I'll say, go ahead and shut it down. Why Dekabu Hamni Dekabundawala is a small country. Everything law um, comes from outside. You don't have the luxury of Dekayumaki shut down. It has to take a process. We said the hotspots, President says, okay, those things should go. Minister of Health, and we are working with WHO as well, and partners. So we are not doing this on our own. We are working with top international offices, including the WHO. And the Minister of Health and his team are working on them, and we said, okay, what is it right now? We have to close the airspace. For which countries? What about our supplies coming in? And also, that will give me the opportunity to say, Minister of Trade also said in cabinet yesterday, there is no need to panic. He's already talked to the business community. They have their stocks. Let Gambians, you calm down. Don't panic. Buy the stuff that you need. We are not saying that go and pay increase and make. No, there is no need for that alarm. We are overreacting. We are also very careful because it's a sickness that we want to go away and not only from Gambia, from the wall. But we have to work also with our Senegal, our neighbors, ECOWAS, UN, AU. So Gambia does not do things on own. It's easy to sit somewhere and say, do this, do that. But I'm glad at the National Assembly, Honorable Halifa Sala said, you know, take it easy. I know some people were saying, close the border, do it. But it will come, but there is a time for everything. The Gambia are working with other people. If the supplies are coming in, some people are evacuating their nationals, you cannot shut them down. But if you are from a trouble spot, you're going to be quarantined. The health authorities are all over the place. But the best person to answer all these questions will be Honorable Samate. In cabinet, the president has mandated him that he is going to speak about these things. But at our own level, we can answer to the best of our knowledge, Omar. You are a, a retired military officer. I can put it that way. Um, I'm sure you must have come across this saying that uh, nations will not depend entirely on allies and mercenaries. The situation that the country is in now, is it not an eye-opener for you people in power to realize that we cannot entirely continue or we cannot continue to rely on other countries? Why not we produce our own sugar, our own rice, and so on? Let's say in the event that Senegal decides to shut their borders, how are we going to survive? Well, this is why we have the Senegambia concept. We don't have control over that. We have other countries that we have a relationship with. But remember, the truth, Moy, your country, my country, 
are surrounded by Senegal. That's a historic, a geographical fact. In as much as you love Gambia, there's nothing you can do about it. It's a geographical phenomenon, a fact. We are in Senegal. So that's why we need to work closely to be Senegambia. It's like something happened to Senegal is going to affect Gambia. They also need us. It's not only one way. We need them, they need us. Trust me. If you have something in your stomach today, it's going to affect your whole body. So Gambia is like that with Senegal. Whatever happens to Gambia, it's going to happen to the whole of Senegal. And the Senegalese know that. We also know that. We want to encourage Senegambian population to understand that we have been condemned by history and by geography, by tradition, by culture, by religion, everything. We are one people. We need to make sure we integrate and do things better. Even the EU, they came together, and some of them are not as close as we are with Senegal. So please, the bigger picture, people should not look at, oh, why is Senegal? No, let us be open-minded about it. The two presidents have made history. President Senghor, former President Senghor, President Jawara, Abdu Juf, Jamme, um, Ablai Wada, they all tried what these people have achieved today. 24 hour, no more border closure, according to President Salah and President Barrow. Free movement, allow people. He said, if you have problems in some areas, get together and discuss. But why do you want to? He said, you are the same people. So please, we want both Gambians and Senegalese to be open-minded. Don't think we, we are also like you. We feel like you're feeling, but we have to look at the bigger picture. Integration, Senegambia, the same families, the same people, but everybody, of course, is a sovereign nation. You take care of yourself, but remember, together, we can do better for our people. Let's talk about this Senegal, especially the military, because as a security person, personnel, you were here in 1981 when Kukwe tried to overthrow That's when I just started. I was not wearing a uniform there. Yeah, but you were in the country. I was, no, I was in the country. You were here. I was How in, old I, were you? I wasn't born then. Huh? No. Don't tell me that. I was born several so years ago. So maybe I'm your grandfather. That's <laughs> <laughs> when I was here. So we know um, when Kukwe tried to overthrow Jawara, Senegalese said no. We will not allow him to overthrow the government. Jame came, they could have come and you know avoid the coup, but they said they they didn't they sit at labor because it's their interest. Because what Senegal doesn't want at the time, Kukoi, from uh, Kukoi looking at his belief, and uh, if he take over Gambia, it would be difficult for Senegal. But Jame, without any at the time, they are not bothered about him. So should Gambia, the same question I will ask you, think about having our own things, not to rely entirely, even if you are going to get 10% outside, but let us have our sugar plantations, sugar factories and so on, and rice. Can't we have that thing in the country, at least create employment, and at least consume things from homemade? Mm. We can also be proud and say, made in the Gambia. Made in the Gambia. You are right, I agree with you. Omar, your country, my country, I'm sorry, is by size, is a small country. It's a tax-based economy country. Let us be realistic. There are certain things. Now that's why President Barrow brings the, the NDP with his team. If we get through with the NDP, all what you're saying, the National Development Plan, all you're saying will uh, capture the NDP. We have inherited broken systems. That's just the truth. You had inherited the loopholes of the First Republic, our uncle and father who's done very well, the champion of human rights, Venerable al Haji Sadauda, who was with exemplary record all over the world. But then we had lapses. We've come 22 years of former President Jami. So now the borough government should be trying to rectify issues we had in the First Republic, Second Republic, and his own agenda, a small country, tax-based economy. So. With the NDP, when people come together, we'll be able to achieve employment. We can get agricultural plans and programs. We can get the health ministry. We can get fisheries. You can get youth and sports. You can get all areas so that we can prepare the Gambia for the future generation. But it's not only sitting down, talking, or confrontation, or politics of no, no. We have to come together as a people, map out the way through the NDP and other programs, the Gambia can achieve something. Instead of depending now on other countries, we look at, we have the Gambia River, we have everything that we need. Now that this president, I'm sure this is why, if we get through his plan, trust me, 
and all the heads come together, we disagree to agree, we can achieve a lot. We see what's going on in here. There is some development that never happened over 50 something years ago. Look at where I come from, Banjul. Since the colonial days, broken roads, mosquito ponds, everything. In the First Republic, cannot be solved. Second Republic, all of us were, cannot be solved. And now Banjulians and Gambians are getting very proud because that phenomenon, that era is changing. This is reality. You have to be honest when people score good, you have to say this is good, irrespective of your political affiliation. So if Gambians come together, all these things will be history. Our young people now will inherit a system that will be very positive, that people go to work and stop all these personality conflicts or tribal instincts or hatred or jealousy. Why do you want to waste your time on those things? Concentrate on national development. Give, look at the people who has capacity, give them the jobs. When something go wrong, come together. Don't say, I'm not part of the government. Corona don't know party. When they come to the Gambia, God forbid. You know, like what we used to say in the army. When a bullet flies, they don't know a general or a private soldier. The bullet is a bullet. You have to take cover. So we have to pray that Gambians come together. It's high time we've been making a lot of noise. National development plan is here. We have good people here, both in and outside the government. Great Gambians who have a lot of capacity. We use them like the doctors are doing right now. We have almost about eight or nine of them. These are household names in the world when you talk about you know, science. And now they're helping the Ministry of Health, they're helping the government, they're helping their country. So they all got to meetings to discuss about this corona and what are the avenues of redress, what mechanisms to be put in place so that the Gambia will be corona free and development will come in. So this is time for us to come together. That's just the truth, Amar. So, um, you know, when you look at Gambia, you look at our situation, we are similar to Lesotho in Southern Africa. It's, it's encircled by Southern Africa, like the way Senegal covered Gambia. But at least they are also doing well. So let's, in the event that um, the situation is getting out of hand, will the military be deployed to contain the situation? Which situation? Um, the corona, because we have seen how other countries have mm. deployed military in trying to handle the situation from providing assistance and so on. Absolutely. It is part of the duty. It is part of their mandate. It is part of their TOR that the armed forces will help civil authority if needed. It's part of internal security operations. I spoke to General Drame about that before. He was self-quarantined. And today, I think at about midday, I spoke to his deputy, General Cham. And there will be statements coming out. And they already, they already bought some containers with sanitizers. They are working closely with the Ministry of Health. And they are sensitizing all the camps around the country. So this is something, this is, this is what happens all over, international best practice. When happens, the federal, if it were in the States, for example, I've been there for about 12 years, you have the federal emergency management. They come in and do their press conferences. Now it's at the state level. It's no more municipality or council. It's at government, it's cabinet, that the president nominates the Minister of Health to coordinate. The general of the army with his team are well briefed and they are also passing that information to all the troops, including the sister services, the police, the SIS. They just had meetings, long meetings coordinated by the SIS. Um, of course, immigration, prisons, um, drug squad, all the sister services are also going to speak the same language so that they will be in place in case they need to aid civil authority in terms of helping the Ministry of Health as a leader to make sure things are done. So it's, it's, things are happening. The government is doing a lot. Press releases, we all had president. We all had what happened in cabinet. The Minister of Health gave, President Barrow gave very clear statement to, to, know, to tell them the vision. You know, Ministry of Finance are working with partners, the funds. We have government gave 500 million. We have even Gambians coming together contributing, I was told. So there's a, there's a lot of goodwill. There's a lot of political goodwill and the, the country uh, we have to stay together and focus. Anybody has something, just bring it on the table. Uh, this is what I have, Omar. Um, the CDS was removed on the 11th. Uh, many say it, is, it was as a result of underperformance. 
What are some of the reasons that the, why he was removed from as the head of the military? Sidi Skinte is a very professional officer. I'm just going to tell you, this is Sheikh Omar Fahman. I will not tell, never tell you what I don't believe. The guy is a good officer. No delay, darling. No, no, no. I won't do that. I mean, I'm, I cannot do that. I'm beyond that. And my ethics will not allow me to say something I don't believe or to say something about somebody I don't know. Never. My dad never wanted. And since I grew up with that, people who are very close to me you know that I don't do that. Um, Masani Kinte, as I told you all, I, I know General Kinte. General Kinte, and I'm going to repeat one more time maybe, was in training in Yundum Camp in 1990-91 when I was company commander heading to Liberia as a major. So that's a, that's a big gap. I would not say something that's not true. He is like but, a younger brother. Okay, let's talk Go about ahead. the military now. Is, why is it the military is still the same? The, the downsizing, the reforms are still not been carried out. Okay, I cannot just want to start answering a question. I don't finish answering the okay. previous one. So okay. please allow me. You ask me about General Kinte. Sure. Please, okay. I crave your indulgence. You're good to go. Uh, yeah. uh, Balan Madenga. No problem. Problem. So, <laughs> Kinte is Marakala. So he's a young, younger brother. Kinte is a very professional officer. I want the country to know that. Militarily, in the Gambian army, he's among the best. And not only that, he's done his junior and senior staff course. He's got a combination, for example, both Ghana and Nigerian. But also he's done his master's in the UK. The guy is a good Gambian. In, in some other areas, he may be found one thing. I don't know about that because I cannot be speculating on things. But as Minister of Defense and a retired officer, you ask me about him, he's a good officer. But this is something that you don't have to stay forever. No one is indispensable. The guy did a good job, contributed to the beginning from security advisor to chief of defense staff. Now the president wants him in another portfolio. <laughs> so it's no big deal. They should not read too long into it. Where the issues happen, maybe it can be handled. But as long as military ethics, military training, professionalism, I think the guy has lots of plan, good vision. But at some stage, as a CDS, you have to move. Somebody else should come. That is all over the wall. And the Gambia will not be an exception. So I think President has appointed him as ambassador. He did well when he was ambassador before. So as far as the armed forces is concerned, I think he, he is a good officer. As a person, I will mark him that the guy is a good officer. Trust me. If he was not good, I would not say much about it. But I can tell you, you can put him anywhere in the wall as a senior officer, he will perform. Because he's been going very good schools, he's done some good training. Does it mean that he's fall free? Hell no. Okay. There are other the other concern coming from governments that there are so many generals in the gum in this sizable army. <laughs> yeah, general. That's true. We found this, as I said, we've inherited a broken system. That's the truth. And President Barrow, I think when he get to the state house, he tried to fix that. Because he, he also expressed concern that when I came here, I think there were ten or eleven generals. I forgot the figure he said. And I said, Wow. And I think he himself tried to move some people, some people left, and that's why we are reorganizing. Because it's not normal to have 10 generals in the Gambian army. It's, it's just not normal. Because every general has something to command. Mm -hmm. Whether you are a lieutenant general, a major general, brigadier general. or brigadier general, mm -hmm. you have command. You cannot get a colonel commanding a platoon. A platoon should be commanded by a lieutenant or second lieutenant. Or sometimes a sergeant, a senior sergeant commands platoon. Like security advisor, there was a time, he was a cadet or something. He commanded a platoon in Yundum. So, but you cannot have a colonel commanding a platoon. When you see that in an army, there is something wrong. Or you see a general commanding a company. Company should be commanded by lieutenant colonels. So the Gambian army, your Gambian army, we are trying to so allow us, support us. I tell you, we have the ideas. We know where we're heading. We just need patience and support. Trust me, very soon, give it another 12 months or so, you will see a fine armed forces with a fine minister of defense because we have a vision. We just need the prayer and the support of all Gambians. You cannot, Gambians are quick to just break stuff. You bring this government up, you help them, please come with us so that we can achieve. But in Yakam Chitorop, they want things to happen overnight. Do you know that the UN has been on SSR since 2008, security sector reform? United Nations, since 2000, they are still on, they are not ready. It does not happen overnight. If you want to do it properly, 
no tribalism, no regionalism, capacity, competence, and character, loyalty. This is what President Barrow is looking for. This is what I'm looking for. This is what Gambians should look for. Not ne Omar Wali, Intelaka, Botafele, Wanyu, Nyojoge, Nyomi, Jisereri. No. No. If somebody's son is from Basse, give him the job. This is our philosophy. And inshallah, inshallah, that's what we're heading on. No, no, no personal vendetta, no personal interest, no strings. What is the interest of the Gambia? As a retired officer and now Minister of Defense, I know all them. I know all of them. Some of them are very young, I don't know, because they were in there. But if I see their record and I see them, I know what they can do. Because it's, the records are clear. Has he gone to the junior staff college? Has he gone to the senior staff college? Has he gone to war college? Has he gone to the strategic? Has he gone logistic? So all this, has he is in the Navy? Has he the naval training? So with all these things, you look at the person, it's not enough like President Barrow said, that's where I'm going to conclude. You can have as many PhDs as possible, but if you are not loyal to the Gambia, we have a problem with you. You can go to school, very good, but it's not only about having a PhD or master's. That's not enough. What about your character? What about your loyalty to the country? What about your professionalism? Are you a greedy person? Are you a person who does not do right? Are you unethical? No one is infallible. We also have those problems. So everybody tries to improve yourself, but the Gambia is bigger than all of us. So when the Gambia stands, we all fall back because that's the philosophy at the MOD and at the State House. All right. Um, recently, there was a report coming from um, eastern part of the country around Basse when Senegalese security were, they came into the country and they shot a Gambian. Are you aware of that? I am aware that they came in. And I will quickly say that it's important for Gambians and Senegalese to know that there is an agreement between us and Senegal that is called a hot pursuit. That Gambians can go into Senegal if it is critical that somebody has done something very wrong against all of us. You are allowed to go in and consult the Senegalese and they'll help you do your job. So maybe a lot of Gambians didn't know that. Senegalese also can come into Gambia to pursue a criminal or somebody allegedly doing something that is bad for the country and for our people. There is an agreement and that's why I have this. Defend security. We just concluded, we just concluded the second presidential... Senegal or Gambia yeah. presidential... There is a lot of information in All here. All right, so we will come to this. But yes. uh, you talked about if somebody is posing a threat to yes. these two countries. Yes. But is Gambia security not uh, equipped enough to handle an individual? But rather than a Senegalese will walk into a sovereign country... Right. And instead of exercising maximum restraint, they even right. shot the person. So, okay, I've not got all the reports with right. me. I've spoken to the National Assembly member uh, from the Kantora area. Uh, during the meeting also in Dakar, a president at ministerial meeting, it was brought up. But I know the hot pursuit aspect is, is an agreement that both countries can do the same. But you have to do it in conjunction. When they came, we should have got our guys to also team up with them and go get the guy. What has he done? I don't have all the report yet. I know they said, allegedly he was shot. They took some hippopotamus or something, but the details with all this corona thing, when I just came out of my trip to Saudi, so I've got yet to read the entire report. But it's been taken up at National Security Council level. It's been handled by the top, my Senegalese counterpart, the minister, they call it the armed forces, Sidiki Kaba and Ali Nguinjai, the minister of interior, with his counterpart, Sonko. And all our army commander, police, we're, we're, we're speaking now the same language. That's what culminated into this agreement. The first presidential council was done in March, I think, of 2018. This is the second one. And now the agreements will come out. And we will come to the media to explain to them. But uh, I yet to read that full report to, to answer the question. But we know about it. The SIS, the police, the, the everybody, they are on board and they are working. Actually, I've got information that there is a delegation coming across the border to come and you know, I mean, extend their apologies to the community. And some of us will also go there to reassure the community that the Gambia will make sure that it's defending its territorial integrity and its citizens. But we have agreement, defense agreement with our neighbors, and we will tell the Gambians what they can do or what they cannot do. But 
Um, yeah, we're, we're working together, we're aware, and uh, the situation is being redressed. And there are other issues about the border and things that we have a lot of work to do together. If he's already invited me to visit him, but because of this corona thing, we're leaving the... So that we can go to Dhaka, have a chat. They'll also come. Minister of Interior, I think, was supposed to be here these days. The Minister of Commerce, Jata, a lady from Casamas, the Environment. Minister of Local Government, Musa Drame, was there. Minister of Fisheries, Uncle James, they call him. Uh, Lamin Job, and uh, Bai Lamin, Honorable Minister of Work. So we had a, a big, a big, very strong delegation that accompanied the president with President Sal and his ministers and a joint commission and uh, his own president. President Sala and Baro agreed, no more border closure, 24 hours. Allow people to move around. And then when we have issues, let us come together, Senegal and Gambia, we discuss it. But please do not close the border, respect the other people, and let's stay together and work. This is the this is the agreement. Imagine a Gambian security, either the paramilitary or the military, decide to go into Senegal in trying to arrest someone and they shot the person. Mm -hmm. This will not be the reaction from Senegal because the authorities in the Gambia are quiet about this and this is a citizen. I think citizen comes before an agreement because this is no, somebody, no, I, your, I your nation, your, your, the citizen of the country. Mm -hmm. You, and uh, we have, this is a sovereign nation as well. Do you think this Senegalese will react differently? Okay, L like something that is hypothetical, it's difficult to answer something that hasn't happened. Okay. That, but I'm telling you, it is an agreement that our forces can go into Senegal to pursue shooting somebody who, I, I have to be careful that, because as I said, I've not got the proper report, but there is no way, shooting somebody for what? They, we said arrest, we are not saying you should go and shoot people, and there are orders for opening fire in the armed forces before you shoot. There must be a reason. Who allows you to shoot? So in order to get you the proper answers, I have to read the report. But our Gambian paramilitary or soldiers can get into Senegalese territory to pursue somebody that we feel is a detriment, is a, is a problem. He has committed offenses that both countries will say no to. But no one is allowed to shoot anybody unless if your life is endangered in self-defense, but that is also a process, and I don't think we've got to that level. Do we have confidence in the Gambian armed forces? Do you, as a defense minister? I am telling you, I can, I'm ready, these armed forces, to go anywhere in the world, and so they will perform. If that is the case, why do you still have foreign forces in the country? That is policy. This is decision by presidents. You know we are not presidents, Three we years. are working. These are ECOWAS presidents who gathered together and said that the Gambia is now at the hem of a constitutional breakdown because the former president um, disputed the elections. This has happened. So do we have to just leave Gambia to fall into trouble? Senegal says no. Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ghana, all those countries. And now they agreed, just like what Sadawda did for Liberia when he chose us to go to peacekeeping. Exactly. It was here at the Kairaba Beach Hotel when Sadauda Jawara with Baba Gida appointed Anul Kuino, a Ghanaian general, and after appointed Joshua Nimiel Dogonyaro, a Nigerian general, to lead the peacekeeping in Liberia. That was the reason. That's why we're in Sudan, peacekeeping, and that's why ECOMIC is here. And someday they're going to leave. But this Gambian army is a professional army. They have gone to some of the best schools I know. We, they just need organization and help, which the president is leading. And that's when we, we roll our sleeves to come and do that job. But I'm telling you, our boys, our people are good, while they have also suffered. They have also suffered in the last 22 years. Lots of wrong things happen. We don't want to stay on the problem. We are now looking for solutions. But trust me, if you look at the list that they gave me, these people went to some of the best schools around the world. And they're very good. They're here. Now we have to surface them and showcase them and bring the new face of the Gambia Armed Forces. We have lots of colonels, lieutenant colonels, majors who have been in best schools around the world. But it is when we're going to now show the Gambians their armed forces. Gradually there will be exercises, basic training that used to happen. In the Army we used to call it combat fitness tests, basic fitness tests, internal security, annual personal weapon tests. 
CFTs, BFTs. This is, this is what battalion runs, brigade exercises. This is what we are yearning for. This is what we used to do in the times of the British Army training team and the time of Conan Down Jai. So we're going to regain that lost glory. But our men are there. They're very good. We just encourage them to know that nobody is going to do it for us. It's Gambians who are going to do it. Let them all know that nobody is going to come from outside to, to, to be the Gambian Armed Forces. Our own sons and daughters should, should take the challenge, should sacrifice to build a proper armed forces for our younger generation. We must have people to sacrifice. And trust me, uh, they're good. And I'm sure, inshallah, with the commander-in-chief, what he wants is what can we do to support our armed forces in terms of accommodation, transportation, training, and good collaboration with the sister services. So, Omar, there is hope. There is hope and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Let's talk about uh, President Sal, the President Council meeting in Dakar. It came at a time when other countries were thinking how to solve it, even though Corona was not in the country. But uh, some Gambians, some citizens said the President should have stayed and looked at mechanisms, but it took him three weeks before he addressed the country. So. Is how important is this presidential council hmm. meeting? I agree. This is the beauty of democracy. It's the newfound democracy. That now I can sit here on Kairaba Avenue and say openly what I feel like. And I'm not going to get scared that somebody is going to follow me when I get out or come knock at my door. So Gambians have achieved something. That is the truth. You see what? Let's do No matter where the pendulum of power swings, always stay with the truth. People who know me know that I'm used to say, saying that. So right. I want you to remind you. The, it depends on it started. Mm -hmm. And President Sal, President Barrow talked to themselves and decided that we're stopping everything. But this commission, we need to meet and talk. Because the border is closed. Our people are suffering. It is also a national, uh, very important, very important. There were borders closed. They don't allow uh, vehicles to go. There's been lots of, so they figured we should come together but quickly. It, but is it not separate for the crime wolf wolf? The authorities in Senegal are aware that this transport union decided to block the Gambian vehicles, commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. But they sat and instead of meeting at a neutral ground, because I have spoke to authorities in the Gambia, the transport union, they, they uh, made an arrangement with the Senegalese, but they never, never turned up. But Gambia is always offering herself to Senegal. Because this is something that affects both countries, but it is always Gambia that will fly into Senegal and it will be like, let's open the borders. But this thing has been going on. That is true. So this is, um, Gambia believes in bureaucracy, diplomacy, and take it easy. President Sal and his government also, but their laws are different from ours. Their transport union, is very powerful and they have a mechanism they work. We cannot dictate what they do. Yes. We know ourselves. But mm -hmm. the Gambia trying to create peace doesn't mean that politeness is not weakness. We are looking for the interests of our people. To, is it an interest to get into problems, confrontation, and always have okay. that, me, that suspicion me, with Senegal? Let me, let me, our let people, me. they need to be open minded. Yeah. Every time they deal with Senegal, they want to have. That's been since the time of Jawara. Yeah, but we need to change that. What, what comes to mind? What, <laughs> how do you feel when you hear ordinary Gambian saying, I wish Jamais here, none of this will happen? That because is the beauty of democracy. No, they are Gambians. It, it's showing, is it not a, showing, a sign of weakness from your, own, from your end? Politeness is not weakness. What is what your strategic plan is, is not weakness. President Salah did a lot for this country that we are not talking about President Sal, I mean. And a lot of Gambians don't want to hear some of those things. This is not your problem. It's been since our great grandparents, our grandparents. It's, it's, they've always had that, you know, they for a guy, they knew Hell no. We are Gambians. We are proud. We're a great country. And they love us a lot. And they, they respect us, they admire us. But nyun put me them negotiate. Lolo do dara. Doesn't mean that they weak Why now look at this? A good negotiation, something that four presidents couldn't have done, these two presidents. Because they, they have a very special relationship. And President Barrow was just saying it yesterday. President Sal is always monitoring to make sure that the Gambia is in peace. For some reason, he has a passion for this country. Because of he sees that he used to come here when he was not president. He has families here. Our people have families in, in Dakar. 
We want to take it easy. He said, if there is a problem, sit down, but discuss. Sometimes, the last president's council was in here, but now the second one is in Dakar. They took us, and we need to say thank you to them. Hospitality, transportation, everything. And they said, now, what are we going to do? Everything we want, the domestication, people should know about that. Before, we used to pay lots of high charges when a flight comes from Dakar to Banjul. It was treated in a different context internationally. But now, with this, never happened. They followed it for 15 years or more, domestication. And President Saleh told his guys, let's make it happen. And now, when charges will be like 50% less, look at this. And in rest, both sides agree to make joint patrols effective, including the fight against illegal timber, trafficking, illicit drug trafficking, and organized crimes. Determine the practical arrangements for exercising the right to cross-border pursuit, like we were talking about. Make it effective. Negotiate an operational protocol between the security forces of the two countries to regulate, more specifically, the right to cross-border pursuit as applicable to the security forces. And etc. Strengthening training for our forces. Do joint operations like we used to do before. And then they said, open border for 24 hours, whether it's Senegambia Bridge, whether it's Banjul. Open the borders, do not close them. And when you have differences, please sit together and have a chat. And with our Senegalese colleagues, what we did is not only writing letters, we also exchanged personal numbers on the directive of the presidents that we should also be talking as colleagues. All that we want to bring peace to our people, free trade, free movement, security. This is a roadmap, hmm? roadmap one. I have another one, roadmap for economic integration, free trade. So my friend, we have to strategically be mature as a country. We are a good country, we are a great country, and we have good people. But let us, let us calm down and let us not be confrontational. Let us look for what we want for our country for the future. And let us encourage strategic partnership with our Senegalese brothers and sisters. We are all one family. You said uh, Senegal did a lot for the Gambia under President Marcus Sall. Oh, just oh did I say that? Maybe. Okay, okay, Senegal did a lot. But, uh, no, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's reciprocal. Right. But we, 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 it's together. Senegal cannot do it alone. Okay. Trust me. During the impasse, when Jambi refused to go, right. the Senegalese foreign minister at the time, time Mamker Njai, was... Oh, Mamker. Mamker was... Uh, trying to pursue the world to come for Jame. Right. And um, when you, at the time, when you talk to Senegalese, they said, we're having, we are helping Gambians. When they are not helping Gambians, <laughs> they are helping their own interests because <laughs> Jame was a problem for Senegal <laughs> at the right. time. Mankir. I, I, I know Mankir. I'm not used to him very much. But it depends on who, who said what, Omar. Where is it coming from? Is this from a government statement? Is this from a private citizen? My friend, the foreign minister of Senegal. Oh, that's what he said. That's he what said he we said are what? We, uh, they were helping Senegal. Even Macky Sall. They're helping Gambia. Ga Gam sorry, they are helping Gambia. Right. And when Jamie, because the, their problem was not to allow Jamie. Imagine this man was a stooge for Senegal. He would have been here up to now. Well, it depends on how you look at it. Okay. Respect the rule of law. Respect human dignity. That has nothing to do with Gambia and Senegal. All I'm telling you, there are certain things. Senegal's president came here the first time he took over to show respect to our former president. Nothing against Jame. We had a good relationship. If somebody makes you ambassador and makes you minister and everything, he was, I was minister of sports in those days. I was also ambassador. But I performed. That's why he looked at it and said, no hard feelings. I think that's the guy I need to do the job. So I'm not going to be unfair to him. But I'm saying that leadership is not like something that you do an individual. It's a collective responsibility. For example, Jame's mistake, it cannot be Jame alone. I always say it. It's a collective responsibility. But also, as a president, there are certain things you cannot do. This, you are the number one. You are the father of the nation. You have to be patient. You have to listen. So closing borders and confrontational. Some people may clap for you. Tomorrow, these are the people who will, cannot do anything for you. And because they have not told you the truth at the beginning. They say, oh, say, Jamba, already go. You know, but Samba Munafe, all of you there, Nani Takalen Malankar. Every Gambian, every good person should avoid that. I think the thing Moine Nyomyar, they together. This guy was president. He came, the first visit, he said, I should go to Gambia. This is my family, and I have respect for this man. Eventually, what happened amongst them or something, I don't know, because I wasn't here. 
But all I'm telling you is Gambia, Senegal help Gambia, Gambia help Senegal. It's both ways. Do you know how many Senegalese are here in this country? So it cannot be one way. Senegalese also are mindful that our citizens are in the Gambia. And this is a strategic country as well. It's a good country. But we need them together because they have to cross Gambia to go to the other side of Senegal. You, you remember that? You have to cross Gambia. So do you want them to cut off Casamas completely? So I think what you do now is be patient, strategic thinking. Let us be smart. Let us stop getting mad. And let us look at what is the interest of our people. Every country has an interest. But don't think, oh, why is Senegal doing that? No, let's work with them. But we are not going to allow that mediocrity. And they know that. I mean, we've interacted with their ministers. We had myself, Secretary General Mohamed Jalo, myself, Baila Amin Job, Musa Drame, Lamin Job, James Gomez. I mean, you're talking about people who are, and they've interacted with their colleagues, and we all agree that we should. This is the second roadmap, economic exchanges and free movement. So we have two. One is defense and security. So this is why I think we owe it to Gambians. Yes, we are in very difficult times of corona and everything, but we also have to, we're saying limit your interactions, maintain some social distances, avoid congregation, but we have to continue to walk. You know, when you talk to people, mm. uh, they always say that Gambia, Senegal, Bena Bopola, Kermun, Kermunko Harnyar. Oh, yeah, that's a very popular saying, you yeah, are right. But, but to, to, to many, it just, uh, it, uh, it's something that... Like, it, it's a, ma, uh, eye uh, service. Yeah, eye service, or it's just a well, stop at where I just like that. Let's try to integrate more, Omar. Let's try to see what we can do for one another. Let's try to build. Gambia and am going to be proud of their people. Gambia and Senegal are different. Senegal is a healthy guy. You praise them. Gambia is somewhere to you gaspa, do galla. Yinga, let us be realistic. Nen you hunt the digger. For them Senegal, you find this the high tribalism here. Don't go from Senegal. They are all Senegal. You can't get top of the sun. They're smart. You don't have you so you say you get an key, fellele joge, kilenga joge, sara bojo. Who has time for those things? So we need to change. Let us step up as the country. We have good people. Let us buy menke nyenke yoyo. Let us prepare for the future because the world is moving. Look at Corona. If we are not together, how can we talk? But everything you want to bring confrontation, Lune can go buga chee chee chulochi. And the Senegalese, you see, they here they operate. You know, you know, Benalang. They cannot go without us. We cannot go without them. People, for what I learned, see, Bobi Nini, you have to go through Ker Ayib, Farafenye to go to that area. Oh, nga dem tamba kunda. But at any time, we have 12 nautical miles that belongs to us. That's international law. You have 200 nautical miles. That's international. And you have the, the, the international water, no man's zone. But anything that comes within our 12 degree area, we should have surveillance in it. So, for example, Gambia, 12 nautical miles, our marine and our navy should know because that, that is our area. But beyond 12 nautical miles to 200, nyonyo nyoma koboka. And it's like agreements and coordination. Uh, anybody kufa nyo def nyo warren notify, oh, warren nyo hamne gali nyo gifofu, because that is nyonyo Senegal. But beyond the 200, is international. It's just agreements, or nyo yoromba at yoyo. So there's a lot of work we need to do. Neka di chow di chow rek dumuna bildeka. Let the young people get up and Mistakes in them as elders, let them learn from them, and then gradually wait for time and take over this country so that problems in our Haniyep, in our Komuna solve. But there are do solve with confrontation. Even at UN or aid, Funeka, Fungen talk, what time? So again, Omar, I'm listening. Finally, um, <laughs> what do you have for the viewers before we end this interview? It's just to say, you know, thank you, man. I've always been thankful for. We've come a long way. And also to congratulate the CEO, the big boss of the um, Fatu Network. She has pulled out a magnificent I mean, occasion that um, we have people from different walks of life, uh, people of very high standing that converged and did some award to say thank you. Like I said, it's not done much in the Gambia. You see people walk all their life after they'll be abandoned. That's Gambia. We need to learn to say thank you to the people who cleared the fields 
Nyugor Alabi, during very difficult times, our forefathers, our people who've been doing good, and our people right now who are doing good. So the Mabuga Wafatu Kamara Neko, congratulations, and the entire team. And we congratulate all those that were awarded. In fact, um, all of them deserve the award. But in every race, you will have the, you know, uh, victorious and the, and the vanquished. Fuck am you win, am you lose. So congratulations, and we hope this will be an annual event. And we also thank all the networks, because everybody is trying to contribute their quota, including our friends in the diaspora. Everybody is trying to see what we can do. Lima Bugawa Remoy, let us see what we can do to build Gambia. Hamga, that's the best way. If you have ideas, come with the relevant institution and share with them. Man, I open myself to my former colleagues, retired officers, people, anybody that they think they can contribute in the defense of this country, our doors are open. And before you go to the wall, come to us and say, what about, why don't you do this? I have this in mind, so that we can also tell you the policies, because there are maybe implications that you don't know about. So I want to say thank you to my family for all their support. Thanks all Gambians, thank President, my colleagues in cabinet, and uh, I avail myself. This is the time to communicate, to explain what our vision is, the changes in the armed forces, the restructuring, um, the security sector reforms, and uh, the re repositioning. And uh, so there's a lot that's going to be happening as the corona uh, virus you know, dies down. We pray that it, it goes away so that we can go back to life normal. You've heard that in New York, they even close bars and restaurants. You know, New York, yeah. if bars and restaurants close, something is not right. right. Remember, in Nevada, all the casinos, the gambling, uh, in, in California, which is what they call it, what the biggest state around the United States, the Decabiginary, and they're saying they shut down bars, restaurants, movies. You take that out of America, you know there's something wrong. So in Yuntamfi, we are doing all our measures. Schools now are going to be Minister of Education, brief cabinet, both ministers, and that they're going to be having radio programs, TV programs. They're going to talk to the networks also to see what programs we can get so that our kids, not the children to go in the streets and idle. They should stay home and read because it's not holiday. So it looks like they may just be losing one week because they should have got two weeks of Easter holiday. So they said stay for three weeks away. We pray that things will calm down. So let them capitalize. And that's exactly what I told Mike. Go after in the morning, start and read your books, listen to classes. At the end of the day, listen to your parents. But don't be hanging around the streets. Security will tell you to go home because there will be security patrols also to make sure that this country is, is in, is maintains to be in peace. And the community policing, finally, Omar, civilians are, the population are encouraged. If you see something that is wrong, call the numbers. If you want to rent people's properties, know who you rent your properties. Get their information. If you see something that's not correct, contact law enforcement. If we do that, our small Gambia will continue to be a beacon of hope uh, the presidents now have put a very high bar, and now it's left for us to come up. Nyom, they want into strong to move together, and they want to take out all the barriers. But they can say it as policy, but people should implement. So far to network again, Omar. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I know I'm also, you know, Omar. But you are the big Omar. No, you are the I'm, big one. You are the defense minister. <laughs> in, 19, in 1981, I was told you are not born. Oh, no, I wasn't. Uh, I was already playing rugby at the MRC. <laughs> So it looks like you are making me like a grandfather, yeah, but you are right. because You see, look at this. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, well, viewers. That's uh, Sheikh Omar Faide, Gambia's defense minister. We'll be back again in two minutes. I'll have an interview with um, Prince Babukar Sankanu. Oh, thank you so much for it. That's time. a surprise. Uh, you have another interview? Yes, I do. <laughs> thank you, Omar. All right. Afterwards, I will have a joint meeting with Santor. One day in the future, three of us will have a... So you're going to send me the link?